Often, the most important presidents are connected with huge historical events. George Washington and the country's founding, Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War, Roosevelt, and the Depression and World War II. Bill Clinton didn't preside in that kind of an era. And therefore, his, his legacy isn't going to stand out dramatically from many of the other presidents. In 1994, um, the Republicans gained control of the House Re of Representatives for the first time since 1954. I think Clinton understood very well the nature of his opposition. Both he understood the goals of the Republican Congress, also understood the personality of his main rival, Newt Gingrich. So Clinton generally took a strategic position, which bothered some Democrats, of moving about halfway, some of his critics would say three quarters of the way, toward the Republicans, but then drawing a sharp line and saying no farther when the Republicans shut down the government to get him to agree to their goals. It was the central showdown of his presidency. There was still wide areas of disagreement, but Clinton always had, and I heard him discuss this, he always had a point of view that if your opponents and you share a view, you shouldn't pretend that you differ and you should cooperate with them on those. Um, and he did with Newt Gingrich. In the immediate aftermath of the shutdown, he and Newt Gingrich sat down, worked out a balanced budget agreement, worked out a proposed set of reforms to Social Security, which, had they been enacted, meant we would not have to be discussing Social Security today. There were no huge events during his presidency, at least no huge positive events. The general uh, shorthand for what was what typified the years of Bill Clinton's presidency would probably be two things. One is the prosperity that existed in his presidency and his role in that, but the other is that he was impeached and was acquitted and permitted to continue in his presidency. Um, his intervention in the Balkans, particularly Kosovo, against the Milosevic government and in favor of first autonomy, then independence for Kosovo, um, would be, first of all, the right thing to do, but secondly, a practical achievement. And it's one of his lasting achievements. There is an independent Kosovo today, and it's because of the risk that Bill Clinton took. Early in his administration, he sat down with economic advisors, some Republicans, some Democratic, some very conservative like Alan Greenspan, and they said to him, if you cut the budget deficit, it's going to bring down long-term interest rates. If that happens, you will give an enormous boost to the economy. It was a completely unproven theory. No president has ever done that before. And he, so he put this plan into motion that involved raising taxes, something which cost him and his party politically. But it turned out that their theory was right, that going after the deficit did in fact help bring down long-term interest rates and laid the basis for the enormous prosperity of the 1990s. It was not the only factor, but it was the starting point. I think it was 15 million people moved above the poverty line during the Clinton presidency, and he would regard that as a great success. Now, this is something I actually have my class talk about, because we, in my class on the presidency, we spend a week on the First Lady, because, just simple fact, First Ladies uh, uh, do play a role in what happens during a presidency, and certainly Hillary Clinton played a role in what happened in Bill Clinton's presidency. And I always ask people, what happens when gender roles are reversed? and then say, what happens if you have the ultimate reversal and have not just a female president, but a female president whose husband used to be president, which is almost too mind-boggling to imagine. And what exactly should he do? She would be better able to explain her views, her proposals, her goals for the country in the context of explaining how they were worked out in the Clinton years when they were for the most part very successful. But she can't, and she knows that.
she has to be very concerned about not running as Mrs. Clinton, about the possibility that his presidency would overshadow her. It's a problem that vice presidents face. Al Gore faced it. It's, you could call it triple a problem for Hillary. Of course, the unique thing would be you have the first female president who has to find a role for an ex-president. And that's what makes this very difficult.